Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I just put out a video on everything we knew about uh, what's kind of going on in the BTS. And of course, as soon as I put that out, we have a post here of the actual patch notes. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into today's video. I haven't read through uh, literally any of this, guys. So bear with me. We will keep it as short and sweet as possible. You know me, I'm mostly going to focus on whatever is also bringing to PvP and how the system functions and lags, etc, etc. So, a new Dylan DLC. Okay, let me click on that. Good lord. Uh, artifacts, motifs, furnishings, item sets. So we will definitely be going over uh, combat options in addition to like the item sets and stuff. So all the chapters, gameplay, blah blah. blah a little synapse of what's going on. So we got a new crafted set here, Wretched Vitality. So it gives you recovery. Uh, magic recovery, excuse me, magic recovery, stamina recovery, weapon and spell damage. While combat, applying a major buff or debuff to a target grants you 260 magic and stamina recovery for 15 seconds. While in combat, applying a minor debuff grants you 130 magic recovery and stamina recovery for 15 seconds. Yo, that's pretty good. So effectively, you'll have 390 recovery of each. So that's really cool. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of classes and stuff you can kind of pair this with and you can just slot this on one bar too You don't have to have this on both bars. So yeah, just whatever your, your buff and debuff bar is he seems to give you uh, You know a shit ton of recovery. I, I like this set wretched vitality. I have to remember that So we got deadlands demolisher gives you maximum stamina weapon and spell damage maximum stamina Your bash attacks still a thousand more damage when you bash you also do physical damage and cone in front of you interrupting all enemies he hits this effect occurs once every two seconds and counts as a bash. Um, for PvP, I, I don't think that's relevant. Um, we got Iron Flask. Max health, max health armor. Cool, I like that. When you drink a potion while in combat, it reduces your damage taken by 12%. So this is pretty much major protection without the actual major protection buff. I, this kind of seems underwhelming. So we got Overland set here. We got Eye of the Grass, this is a light armor set. Gives you Magicka, weapon and spell damage, spell critical and the five piece when you deal critical damage generate seven ultimate this effect can occur every five seconds oh ooh, that's pretty good kind of like that for the dk not gonna lie excess war this medium armor set we get a uh, critical chance weapon spell damage critical chance then critical damage with the direct damage ability grants you a damage shield that absorbs eight thousand damage for six seconds this can occur every six seconds i mean yeah. maybe uh, we have Kin Marcher's Cruelty. We got uh, health, stamina recovery, armor, and when you deal direct damage, you apply one of five major debuffs to your enemies within eight meters of you for 18 seconds. Uh oh. This effect can occur once every eight seconds and only if the enemy is in range. Eligible debuffs are major breach, major cowardice, major defile, major maim, and major vulnerability. Oh wow. That's pretty cool. That, that's within eight meters around you. I mean, it is a really low uh, debuff to enemies within eight meters of you for 18 seconds. And then, so this can prop twice within the, the duration. That's, that's pretty cool. Actually, I want to think about this set. Like, there, there's a lot of, like, turn and burn combos you can uh, work in with this. That's pretty good. New collectibles, outfits, and styles. We're gonna skip that. Tiles, motifs. You guys can read through this. I'll leave the uh, the patch notes down in the description. Go ahead and copy that for the other uh, video. So we got the armory system. As you guys know, the armory system. Uh, this is essentially a UI that's going to allow you to equip multiple sets and builds uh, in an instant without having to painstakingly go through unequip and reequip items. Um, PC, if you guys are unfamiliar, if you're on console, PC already has kind of like an add-on that does this, but since you guys don't have add-ons, you know, this kind of compensates for that. Turn camera down a little bit, so. Uh, curated item set drops, bosses and rewards uh, from Marines Incursion. Now, preferentially, drop item sets that had not been unlocked. Okay, yeah, so essentially what this is, guys... If you're trying to grind a set and if you haven't got uh, one item from the set, this ensures that you're at least you're not going to get any repeats until you complete the entire set. 
And once you complete the entire set, you can just pull it from collections if you need another uh, copy of that. So th this is great. I love this. You can save a lot of time with grinding and such. Uh, new mythic items. So yeah, of course we're going to show the spoilers. Update 32 adds three new mythic items to obtain through the antiquity system. Note that the Grimoire chapter is required in order to unearth antiquities. Yeah, a little bit pay to win, but all right. So we have Mark and Ring of Majesty. So you gain 100 weapon display damage and 1500 armor free for each three step bonus active on the wearer. For each three set bonus. So you just. Okay, so you just have to have three pieces. So th this is interesting. Um. I mean, typically you're gonna run two five pieces at two piece, so I don't know. This set, oh, can I read what the devs have to say? This set's effect counts for any three or five piece set in which you're wearing a minimum three piece. For example, yeah, we know, we know. Hunting's Rage also counts as one three piece one set on the wear as would if I did. Okay. Wearing a, wearing three pieces of Hunting's Rage also counts as one three set bonus on the wear. As would wearing five. Okay, so the, yeah, that's. Uh, I think this is pretty dog shit. Yeah, this is. Uh, well, so you're. I'm sure there's some builds where you can get three instances of this, but I think most people are going to get two. So essentially, you're going to get 200 spell damage and uh, 2300 uh, armor. That's. That's not good. I don't like that. So we have a. Uh, Belazar's Band. Increase the damage you light attacks by 1185. When you deal damage with a consecutive melee light attacks, gain a stack of Belazar's Temper for 10 seconds. Up to 5 stacks. When you perform a fully charged heavy attack, consumes the Temper and deals physical damage per stack to enemies in a line. After a 1 second delay, stun them for 3 seconds if, if the 5 stacks are consumed. This effect can occur once every 4 seconds scales off the higher. More stamina procs, man. Like, compare this to Frenzy of Momentum. Just just more procs for stamina. No offense to you stamina guys, but come on. So I'm hoping this is the Magicka variant. So, Spalder of Ruin. Activating Crouch. Oh, God. Activating Crouch toggles on and off a 12 meter aura of pride. Up to 12 allies in the aura gain 260 weapon and spoil damage. Reduce weapon and spoil damage by 130 for every group or anything from the aura. Right. See, I mean, this is this is okay. This is cool, but Belzar's band is just yet another stamina proc set that they're just gonna Donny spin to win you with frenzy momentum plus this plus you know whatever. So one shot's gonna be even harder on the, the stamina build, and then yeah, this is pretty underwhelming mythics, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I don't see myself farming any of these. Uh, new homes, combat music, uh, yeah, you can toggle on and off now, like, come on, guys, we, we all listen to Pandora and stuff anyway. PvP emotes, uh, okay, uh, this is for just support-wise. Uh, event testing and Donkey Celebration, grab your axe and back plunder from the Don Celebration returns to Tamriel, plumb in the depths of the dungeons. Bonus rewards during this annual event. The first dungeon boss you defeat in a day will drop two event tickets and special rewards and Daunted boxes. Okay, so we've already seen this before. Alright, so this is kind of uh, what's going on in the PTS. I'll read through this because I'm mildly curious myself. For this PTS cycle, we're offering two templates for you to utilize. One max level 3600 CP template with all new item sets placed directly in your inventory. Do you like these going into your inventory instead of the bags? Let us know. Um, I'd rather just type in something and it bring it up instead of going through a bag and a bag and a bag and a bag. It's, it's That's dumb to find your stuff. Uh, so all that's going to be in our tutorials. We're not too much worried about that, guys. But yeah, we, the, the new sets, uh, I think they have potential. They don't see super broken like this patch. So I guess that's good. I want to know what they're doing these proc set changes, though. Is this going to be in here? Bosses, general furnishings, quest, uh, synchrotorum trials, scale collar peak. Uh, not too worried about dungeons. I want to see class balances, guys. That would be great. Antiquities, quests, dungeons, general, 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 general quests. 
you guys can read this through you want. I'm trying to keep this as quick as possible. Uh, yep, yeah, my Karna. Yeah, still more dungeons. Dungeons. Combat and abilities. Okay, so we'll kind of start here. Uh, made the following adjustments to Bash. Uh, this core combat skill now has a, uh, a third of a second cooldown from a little bit over a third of a second cooldown. I'm sure it can be cast up to three times per second at most. Yeah, good luck with the lag getting this on three times. Reduce the cost to 765, so pretty much half of it to ensure that it's one third of the melee spammable. This damage now scales off a mixture of your physical and spell resistance, okay. To ensure that you're really okay, that's pretty interesting. Reduce the cooldown phase after activating Bash to prevent you from casting other abilities to 33 milliseconds. I guess I should have zoomed in. Should, guys. Smooth for smoother gameplay, I fixed an issue where proc based conditions could unintentionally secede when removing negative round effects. I'm not sure what all this stuff means, guys, to be honest with you. I'm writing this down a little bit. I know my face will be glaring like crap. Uh, stampede. Uh, just a bunch of spoilers. Alright, so, so they didn't really change too much when it comes to uh, just basic combat now. So abilities and item sets that heal damage or store res resources on a set frequency while an area of effect will no longer display visual effects on the ground. Well, yeah, these servers just can't handle it, to be honest. So, less visual high swords you guys have to worry about. Alright, Dragonite. Ardent Flame. Combustion. Increased resource granted from this passive to 1,000? But it added a cooldown. No. Added a cooldown of half a second to each effect, which are separately tracked from one another to make up for the above increased mass buff the charge straight is getting. Oh, to make up for the above increase in the massive buff the charge tree is getting. Oh god, guys. I just changed everything over to sharp in this patch. Oh god. So, um, this can be pretty good. I like this, maybe. We'll see. Inferno. This ability and cauterized morph now grant both. Oh, yes. Major prophecy and savagery rather than only prophecy. Very nice. Flames of Oblivion. This morph now launches three fireballs up for two since it lost part of its unique morph function. Oh, we get three balls, guys. You could almost use this as a spammable, like legit. Lava Whip, this ability has morphs now scale for highest offensive stats, rather than exclusively magicka based stats. May this finally end the fiery and angel debate over getting a stamina whip. I, I never debated that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> who and all debated that? Let's uh, let's be real. How about make it non-dodgeable when you get a power lash? That'd be great. Flame lash more. Fix an issue where this more did not apply off balance to targets who are immobilized, but not already off balance. Yeah. The override ability power lash now heals immediately rather than over the two seconds. I do not like that change, but its total healing per cast has been reduced by approximately 43%. However, power lash no longer has a three-second cooldown. Okay. Ballerinas are back, they say. Okay, I actually like these changes, man. I really like talents. So anyone who's stuck in your talents, you can just boom, boom, boom. Just keep pumping out the whips and keep pumping up healing. Okay. Very nice. Okay, Molten Whip's going to have to go through some changes to, to really counter this. Molten Whip. Seething Fury now lasts 10 seconds. Thank God, dude. Five seconds is so stressful. To help it feel... Wait, yeah, there it is. <laughs> So up to 10 seconds for 5 seconds to help it feel way less stressful to use in rotation and allow for active version of the perf uh, activation of the perfect moment. Okay, that's a good change because I just was working on a no proc like single target Magicka DK build and I, it was so stressful to line up the burst with like your perfected maelstrom and I was like, man, it's, it's too hard to get off in 5 seconds. Okay, so that's a really good change. Very cool. Uh, we're not going to read the spoilers. So you can just keep lashing people to heal. That's awesome. I, I love Power Lash. World in Ruin. This passive now increases your damage done with flame and poison attacks by 2 to 5% rather than increasing your damage done with area of effect flame attacks. Oh, oh. oh guys. We get a 5% buff. Oh, boy. 5% damage buff. Let's go. Ash Cloud, this needs some, some love. They, they need to reduce the cost. See, before I read this. This building is more. So now costs 378 
magic recovery is second while active rather than having a massive up from cost. Yes, thank dude, they're paying attention even before I'm reading this. Yes, thank you. Keeping their cost per second relatively the same while removing the penalty of having to recast the ability aside from losing a global cooldown. Okay, that's amazing. That's a pretty cool. You just gotta forget to untoggle it. These abilities now take 15 times over duration, down from 16, whether total damage or healing per gas. Remains relatively the same. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, these abilities now last 15 seconds of base rather than 12. These abilities now rank up, uh, blah, 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 blah. Eruption. This Morph's initial hit damage now has a 10 second cooldown to prevent it from turning into an incredibly low costing AoE spammable. Um, okay, agreed. Battle Roar passive, oh boy. This passive now restores uh, 50 health, magic, and stamina for ultra consume rather than the 23 and 46. Okay, so more sustain for us. Yo, okay, they, they give DK a lot of love. I like it. Yeah. Can't, uh,. DK, DK honestly needs a little bit more love, to be honest, with uh, fixing their leap, but, you know. So we'll go to Necromancer Graveler, Boneyard. Increase the damage and stability and smores by approximately 10% per tick since they take 10 times instead of 11 after the change in update 30. That's completely irrelevant. We have Nightblade with the Assassin Tree. Grim Focus, this ability and smores now grant 1% damage done per stack rather than 2. Okay. So you don't get the healing. So rather than two critical damage and healing per stack. So yeah, this is nerf. Well needed. This change is well done to help ensure the class keeps up in damage after the... Okay. Whatever. Shadow Path of Darkness. Twisting Pass more. This ability damage now scales dynamically with the highest of your offensive stack. It's very cool. Sorcerer. Storm Calling. Uh, Lightning Splash. Fixed an issue where this ability was ending too soon and missing an extra tick of damage. Uh, no one really noticed that. It, Adric Spear. Skill line, we got spear shards for the Templar. Fix an issue where this ability and smores were ending slightly too soon, causing them to miss an extra ticket damage. I can't say I've ever noticed any of this. Dawn's Wrath, Backlash, this ability and smores visual effects are now visible to the caster and the enemies rather than anyone. Okay, that's good. Again, they're trying to cut down on like all the particle effects. It's here to kind of help out the servers a little bit. Restoring light, cleansing ritual. Increase the scaling coefficients of this ability and smores by approximately 17% since they take 6 times instead of 7 after the change of update 30. Okay. We got the Warden. A green balance Emerald Moss makes an issue where the Morse of the healing sinks are not properly contributing to its passive. Cool. Uh, vampire, misform this ability and smores damage reduction not only works against player attacks rather than any attack to prevent from invalidating the threats in PvE encounters. Okay, I thought that was going to be a bigger deal than it was. Oh no, don't don't change Pain's Refuge, please no. This star now reduces your damage taken by 2% for every 2 negative effects on you rather than 1% every 1 negative effect. The cap is still at 20. Why did they change this? This change was done to reduce the power of this node in encounters against single targets as meant to shine out number situations. I mean, yeah, it's not going to affect, you know, us 1BXers all too much. Shield Master fixed an issue where this node did not apply to Sun Shield and its morph or First Eye Shield and its morph. Never noticed it. Uh, Warfare, Cutting Defense. Damage from this node can proc weapon enchantments or poisons in efforts to help make it more enticing for tanks who want to trigger this effect more reliably without dropping block. Okay. Fix an issue where the damage from this proc had a higher chance to proc status effects. Very nice. Alright, uh, general. Um, I, I guess we'll read through this. Fix an issue where some tooltips would display improper values when wearing a combination of perfected and non-perfected sets. Item sets that proc off damage shields will now work with hardening enchantments for consistently as these were inconsistent with the behavior fix in this where these sets would require you to drink a potion only worked when you were actually looking at the another target clever alchemist thank you your enemies will no longer be the judge of <laughs> you being in combat okay fix an issue where many sets that require critical strikes could proc off other procs huh I can't think of the sets in mind, but I'm sure they're out there. The following rules can now be followed with item sets when applicable and has been applied to all existing sets. Sets of grant weapons, spell damage, not grant both. Sets of grant physical, spell penetration, not grant both. Spans of, uh, okay, everything grants both. Cool. Item sets of scale of weapon damage, spell damage, max magic, and maximum stamina can now gain critical, critical strike. Can now again critically strike. Okay. 
Item sets the scale in order of magnitude or based on addition modifiers such as uh, Relic Windows or Zons would not critically strike. Many of these sets have received adjustments in their power as well. Below are the sets that can critically strike and that have had their scaling values reduced by approximately 5%. If another number is listed next to the set name, this is the true value change. Um, arena weapons. Okay, reduce the damage by approximately 28%. Print the momentum. Uh, you guys can read this here. I'll just kind of go over what uh, what offhand is. New frenzy momentum is big. Dungeons and Trials. Uh, Chlorine's Legacy. This set now only procs off light and heavy attacks instead of any single target. Okay. So does that mean they crit? Maybe maybe I should reread this. Below are the sets that can critically strike. Okay, so all these can critically strike now. Okay, so they just reduce damage. As for usual, monster mask. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, Earth gore. I hate fucking Earth gore. This set now follows the standards. Of the overtime effects has a two second delay. Great, dude. I hate going in for a burst and then like while while they're flying in the air, they just get bursted back up to full because of Earth gore. Uh, okay. Molly Infernal, yeah, yada yada, Mafala. I don't think any of these really affect PvP all too much. Velvet does, so they reduce its damage at 21%. Okay. Overland sets. Uh really nothing to note. PvP source ones. Alright, where where is Rothgar? So Rothgar's not here, so that means it can't crit. Okay. I think that's what that means, right, guys? Yeah, Rothgar would be PvP source, so yeah, Rothgar can't create, thank god. Alright, I'm says that deal a burst of damage in 4 seconds or less, now have a 1 second window after proccing that event similar to... Similar... Oh, English! Have a 1 second window after proccing that prevent similar item sets from activating. Okay, item sets that have innate counterplays such as delays, minimum travel times, or in tail grass, have a one second or no cooldowns are exempt from adjustment. Okay. If wearing multiples of these sets at once, any action that would activate multiple sets will instead trigger the first equipped set and suppress the other for one second. After that second passes, you'll be able to attempt to trigger them again. Okay, this set affects. Okay, Ash and Griv, uh, Frenzy Momentum. Well, Rothgar's chill, thank god, dude. Rothgar needs its own special cooldown. It needs to be like four seconds. Uh, the rest of them kind of mad, but but Rothgar is the uh, the big boy. So item traits charge increase the potency. Oh my god! Increase the potency of this trait to 480 percent, up from 220 to ensure it's more competitive with other traits. Oh my Lanta. Oh my Lanta, DK is about to go off this patch, fellas. Currently, this trade is being engaged with many, mainly Dragonites, trying to get as much sustain as they can, and we'd like the trade to be a bit more than a one-note wonder. Now, it should help empower those crafty status effect builds, and there you have some better synergy with you know, activating them. Oh man, DKs are going to be turned off this patch, guys. It's about time. We've been shit on for like years. Literally years, okay? Ability altering weapons get Chaotic Whirlwind. Um, it now stacks off Chaotic Whirlwind for 5 seconds after casting Whirlwind while in combat, granting 5% movement speed per stack and increase your weapon spell damage by 6 for every 1% bonus movement speed you have up to cap of 450. And also, this effect stacks up to 5 times upon reaching 5 stacks. The duration doubles cannot be refreshed. Okay. Uh, concentrated Force, I'm really too worried about. We don't really use that in PvP. Assassin's Gal, uh, just some issues. Mechanical Acuity is an interesting one. This item grants a stack of Mechanical Acuity for 4 seconds. Whenever you deal non-critical damage, granting you 20% critical strike chance per stack, up to once every half second. After this effect reaches 5 stacks, it can not occur again for 25 seconds. Um, 
Let's see if the devs have to say about this one. This change was done to help tone down the burst enabling nature of this set, where it has significantly increased your kill potential with no real drawback. Now the set has a natural buildup of phase and probably gets weaker the more critical chance you already have, as it makes it hard to generate stacks as you build them. Okay, I like this change. Because, like, if someone comes at you, like a Nightblade or a, uh, a Magplar, like, with, like, mechanical acuity and biting jabs, you're, you're just dead. <laughs> it's so much damage. Um, elemental succession. Um, this set now grants its bonuses randomly per element when you deal any source of flame. Oh man, that kind of sucks. It's a... Okay, so elemental succession, like, it, it, procs, it procs damage randomly on your, your elemental instead of whatever elemental you use to actually proc it. Uh, this change is done to ensure its power is not outright better than the flat bonuses version of these sets, such as Silks of the Sun, as well as we significantly reduce the amount of logic checks being done per second on the back end. Okay, whatever. Uh, monster Masks. Uh, correct terminology, yeah, yada yada, no one really cares. PvP source. Alright, Dark Convergence. What have we done? Reduce this set's damage by approximately 59%, yeah, think but increase the scaling per target up to 50%. Beautiful change. Beautiful change. Thank you, Zoss. Oh. Gotta got a little excited there. Oh god. Did we break the game, guys? Uh-oh. <laughs> Dark. Okay. So now we're back. <laughs> Reduce the radius of the effect size to 10 meters down from 12. Uh, this set pulls once after it's delayed rather than twice over restoration. Okay, yeah, that's really annoying. Like, you hold block, hold block, hold block, roll dodge, and it still pulls you anyway. The pull, uh, the pull now pulls all nearby enemy targets rather than six per pull, so that it remains effective against large groups. Yo, this is great! Like, this is straight up a Zerg bursting soul, and now if Zergs want to use it against the solo players, it's not going to do jack shit. So, you. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Deadly Strikes, Maragtong, Rathian, Imperium. Those really stick out to me. I'll try to keep this short, guys. It's, it's already pretty long. Audio. Um, some outfit changes. Again, you guys can read through this as well. I just want to go over the, the PvP highlights and class changes for the most part. Um, zones. Add-ons. Chat. Gamepad modes. Okay. It's console stuff. Okay, well, that's it, guys. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible because I know that, uh, yeah, a lot of people are just not going to. <laughs> and so, here we are, guys. Thank you again, and you all have a great rest of your evening. Take care.